good to go. CNT or the National Tempestus Coordination. Present date. Today, April 20th, 2021, we decreed the birth of the NTC. This being our first day of public struggle for the Tempestus Revolution, calling for the organization of our struggle and resistance. Our only objective is the destruction of the system and our fight is against its representatives. Our aim is the coordination of all those with the same objective, organizing all groups and individuals in a resistance without leaders. We do not have an interest in political militancy. We are only interested in action and our only law is the law of the tempest. If we wanted to use a label to enclose our free will of action in its political terms, this label would be that of anarcho-fascism, uniting the most radical points of the left and the most radical extreme of the right, removing in the process everything that is left and right. We would have the closest thing to the, to the tempestuous worldview within political language. Anarcho-fascism is tempestism. And tempestism is an eternal yes to the struggle. And beyond that, it is to provoke the conflict itself from within and outside of itself. An inexhaustible war against the ego, against the person, against the whole. That is why we find it necessary to expose and structure the vision of the world of the current 1611, as is done here in this manifesto that coordinates the external struggle of anyone who shares our vision of the cosmos or who seeks our same goals, even with it, without our optics. Tempestism does not seek members. Tem tempestism is born to raise the voice among neighbors and call equals, wherever it comes from. What we want is to celebrate with those few destined for the heights. Our ideal does not belong to this world and its goal is a throne above the stars and higher still. The way in which we will achieve our objectives is by presenting tempestism to the world and by practicing the tempestus hypothesis, which we have to call anarcho-fascism to cause maximum stridency in those who are not able to act alongside us in order to attack all separately, but to the same objective each one seeking the same goal through his own method and at his own pace, but never stopping in the search for the conquest of the state and the total destruction of the system. The way in which we will achieve our objectives is by presenting tempestism to the world and by practicing the tempestist hypothesis, which we have to call anarcho-fascism to cause maximum stridency in those who are not able to act alongside us in order to attack all separately, but to the same objective, each one seeking the same goal through his own method and at his own pace, but never stopping in the search for the conquest of the state and the total destruction of the system. The NTC arises as the materialization of the seven aesthetic points of the tempestuous artistic avant-garde organizing a front of action inspired by that particular vision of the cosmos. We cannot use hope to combat the nihilism of the modern world, but on the contrary, the revolutionary storm will bring the star to the gloomy world of the spiritual desert that today dominates the majority. We demand the creation of a new man and the right to find our own destiny by destroying the only thing that prevents us from reaching it, the system, the modern world and its consequences. We are this new revolutionary elite, but the thesis of the past, we are neither fascists nor communists. We are what is above them. We will discipline the anarchist and make him anarch. We will take away the state from the fascist and we will make it people. We will give a homeland to the communist and we will make him fascist. We will give a spirit to a man and we will make him a tempest. Let the people rise up and the tempest breaks loose. Anarchists are said to have no vision and do nothing but destroy. 
The only way they find any vision is to find the possibility of fascism. Koichi Toyoma. Down with the state under all its manifestations and incarnations. For us who are mortuary of individualism, it gives us nothing more than, because of the present darkness and the gloomy tomorrow, the absurd religion, but always consoling of anarchy, Benito Mussolini. All right, so that's like part one of the Tempest Manifesto. I'm uh, sitting here with my droogs tonight. Uh, we got... Myself, Giovanni, we got Alcaz, we got Zoltanis, we got CSD. What do you guys think about that first part, that introduction to the Tempest Manifesto? It reminds me a lot of, like, a bunch of things, like like the National Bolshevik Party in Russia, but also particularly the national anarchists and pan-anarchist movements. I got more of a Fume vibe going on right there, but it definitely seems like in the... Uh, views like on the state uh it seems like it's more of just like it, the state is like manifested in the individual really not really as much when it com- comes to like governing so like, yeah uh, i think in a regard like that you could call it like a form of political egoism though it sounds like they're also attacking it, egoism at the same time it is very egoist like fascia fascia egoism it definitely has the um Dionysian vibe of like early fascism to me. Um, I think that's what they're trying to channel. We should probably like introduce the group to a certain extent too. Um, they call themselves CNT 1611. They're from Mexico. Um, follow Francisco Lazardi on Twitter when he's on Twitter. He got banned again recently, but um yeah um yeah i think they're channeling early fascism like proto-fascism up to nunzio and marinetti and alceste de ambris and all those guys to be honest when i first heard of this i i thought this was like an obscure group that was like back in the 30s but it just can't but the manifesto just came out recently yeah like a week ago this is very current um yeah um does anyone have anything they want to add to that introduction? Uh, nope. Just uh, legalize cocaine and let me walk around in public naked. <laughs> God damn it. Salute, salute. All right, so part two, towards a nationalism without a state. And he starts with a Bakunin quote here. The state is not the homeland. It is the abstraction the metaphysical, mystical, political, and legal fiction of the homeland. The popular masses of all countries deeply love their homeland, but that is natural, real love. Mikhail Bakunin. On that note, we start part two. Kind of sounds like uh, they have some similarities of Nazis right there. (laughs) 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 The nation predates the rate, the state. It's almost as if fascism's roots are in anarchism and not conservatism. Who would have thunk it? Uh, well, anyway. it is. Oh. anyway, we're going to start reading part two. The historical nation is a bourgeois invention of the modern world at the service of the system, sacrificing men and their wills on the altar of artificial limits and constitutions of a Masonic nature. For us, the people is the true homeland. The people is the ethnic cultural bond that associates freely and voluntarily according to tribal criteria. Cultural union and identity do not respond to or need permits, constitutions or democracies. The nation is the people and nothing else. The diluted concept of nation does not mean at all for us anarcho-fascists, any state entity but refers only to a de facto formation, an organic and natural community. In the words of the Mexican fascist writer, Jose Luis Ontiveros, we do not have roots in an already existing land that protects us because we reproach the one where we were born for its tendency to abjection, lack of creativity, the lethargy of being, 
as anarcho-fascists seek to create, not reestablish, a new nation. And this implies the disintegration of any state entity that acts falsely on behalf of the nation. We know well that the totality sorry, the totalitarian state of the historical fascist doctrine falls into a mechanism of centralization, into the bureaucracy of party officials and into massification, while the organic community consists of a tribe, federation or nation made up of different articulated autonomous communities by a superior tribal will that supports and guides them insofar as it is an integrating unit the fascist totalitarianism is a system in which unity is imposed from the outside, not on the basis of the intrinsic force of a common idea and a natural and recognized authority, but by the way of direct intervention. And thus also the apparatus politician at the service of a mediocre man, who unable to naturally exercise his own will, seizes government powers to carry out his whims. In the same way, we believe that placing moral authority in the hands of the state and not of the people themselves, as the old Mussolini fascism did, results in a serious poison to national sentiment. That concludes part two. Um, thoughts? Again, it reminds me a lot of what national anarchism says, but national anarchism denies any link between it and fascism. I think uh, he defines the nation as the race and not the state. Like, that's not very... Fun. Yeah, it seems it's like it's definitely NS. taking more of a traditional nationalist stance. Yeah. yeah. No, not very racial, I guess. I think the critique of this would be that, like, power always centralizes. Well, the... I would say, to Alcaz, I would say, like, that is very racial. It is, like, more NS than classical fascism like it's not genteel well, yeah i guess you could well not just like not just like ns it's nationalism in general because like nationalism during like the jacobin like revolution was like predicated on like an ethnic awareness which is more of a challenge to the states the king property norms and stuff like that and uh you kind of see that like in the german socialist movement for example like bakunin uh, worked with wagner who was like a nationalist yeah. Yeah. And, and so, like that's probably what they're doing right and Burkunin here. was a pan-slavic nationalist if i'm not mistaken yeah it's it's kind of funny when when modern day anarchists say you can't be a nationalist and be an anarchist at the same time but when you <clears throat> point to Burkunin, they act like it doesn't exist yeah and marx was a germanic nationalist like he said a lot of anti-slavic and pro-german stuff and proudhon was for exterminating the jews for being deicide against french people yeah the first time i was called a nazi in real life it, it was back when i was still an anarchist and it was because i liked proudhon a fucking communist <laughs> called me a fucking nazi like That's i didn't get funny. it at the time the more i read it I mean, there's a lot of might makes right stuff in anarchism. It, and I don't remember which leftist off, author said this, but they said that a lot of like fascist origins can be traced back to Proudhon. I mean, after all, one of the first quasi-fascist think tanks was called Circle Proudhon. Yeah, like Circle Proudhon is kind of interesting because, like, for like a lot of the fascist like intellectuals like that were a part of that. It's more rooted in Valois, which was like the anti-racial manifestation, and like Nazis can also be traced to Circle Proudhon with Edward Berth because Berth was like a hardcore racist materialist. I wish there was more written in English about Edward Berth because he's a very interesting figure. Well, he has a lot of essays. They're just not translated. Like, Plutocratic Satellites is only translated by Morgan. So I had to reach out to a Frenchman who could get me one from Archive who translated it so I could read a more accurate translation. Because, like, in Morgan's translation, uh, national syndicalism is replaced with fascism. And there's also several parts where Berth is basically calling out Jews for being responsible for capitalism, which weren't in Morgan's translation. But we're probably off topic. But... Wait, H.R. Morgan's translations or a different Morgan? Yeah, H.R. Morgan has a translation in the Codex Fascismo, but it's not an accurate translation. It's actually highly edited, and some stuff is selectively kept out. Yeah, that tranny 
Dude, I, I hate, dude. He, it's a lot of his shit. But we're we're off topic though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, this actually kind of leads into the part three of the anarcho-fascismo tempest manifesto from Mexico. Uh, fascism. Yeah, they're all spooks. Fascism as true anarchism. And it starts with this quote, at heart, we are anarcho-fascists from Robert Brasilech. My pronunciation is horrible. Sorry, I've been drinking, guys. French <laughs> fascist and martyr of the Revolution National. The first French national syndicalism, C. Sorel, Proudhon, Valois, and Berth, rose as the reverse of anarcho-syndicalism as the nationalization of the anarchist union, of municipalism and the agrarian community, in addition to voluntarism, its idea of anti-party and its use of violence. Italian fascism was engendered as the political materialization of national syndicalist French ideas adapted to the cultural and national idiosyncrasies of the Italian people. This being the case, historical anarchism at times approaches fascism, becoming on more than one occasion to transform itself onto it, as shown by the vicissitudes of Italian avant-garde groups. Both political tendencies coincide in the demand for independent political action. And there weren't, and there weren't few of the anarchists who joined the efforts of fascism. Massimo Rocca, Maria, Rigier, Leandro Arpanati, Filippo Turati, Guido Colagero, Antonio Capizzi, Mario Carli, Giovanni Papini, Mario Merlino, Berto Ricci, Ferruccio Vecchi, Mark Augier, seeing in its possibility of a vertilicized anarchy. Weren't we all anarchists, said the Italian anarcho-fascist Berto Ricci when he was questioned about his left libertarian militancy. Our purpose is the creation of a Hispanic homologue to what fascism was, understood as a purely European phenomenon. To fuse the idea of national syndicalism taken as a base, Iberian anarcho-communism and nationalizing it, being based on the identity and tribal idiosyncrasy. To go back to anarchism from fascism, just as Ernesto Gimez Caballero thought, it is about adapting Ramiro Ledesma Ramos ideas to our anarch to our anarchist present. Um, that, One that concludes- question I would have is when they like talk about race, do they mean like a like the cosmos race, like how his the spiritual so, race? In his yeah, man? so if they're Hispanic, uh, they're probably referring to cosmic race because like Hispanics believe like race is like cultural and language, yeah, uh, and it embraces everybody. Whereas like Russians, it's like race is understood purely as like religion, so like orthodoxy, whereas like in Central European or Anglo civilizations, it's understood as racial, pure, like biological. Yeah. Uh, I personally think just from like hearing that, though, uh, some of like the anarchist people was mentioning involved in the fascist party, though, like uh, actually some of those are like historically uh, were like high ranking black shirts that that the movie like Thalo of Sodom was based off of because a lot of them were doing like lots of like weird atrocity shit during the so- social republic, uh, like BDSM torture, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Also, surprisingly, there's been no uh, talk of a uh, German national socialism so far. Oh, never mind. It's in the next chapter. <laughs> Yeah. Never mind. I guess that's everything on that. But... Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. What did I miss? Like, I had to walk away for a second. Um, oh, we, uh, we talked for a few seconds. seconds. So yeah, we just were talking opinions. about, like, the, the cosmic race, and that was about it. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so the next part is a Fuhrer for each man and for each people a country. 
starts with a quote from Berto Ricci here. Uh, we do not love Hitler because he represents an element of order in Germany. We love him because he represents an element of disorder in Europe. Berto Ricci, Italian anarcho-individualist. Another quote. The anarch is to anarchism what the monarch is to monarchism. Ernst Jünger. And we start the next part. It is in this sense that we find in anarchy the delusional and determined assertion of authority. We understand anarchism as the duty, but even also the right of an individual minority of a spiritual elite made up of brave, undisciplined soldiers. Anarchists with a clear idea of order, illustrious militants who abandon traditional anti-militarist and anti-authoritarian positions for the use of daggers is how we define ourselves. The deep sense of inner leadership in which each man has to be dictator of himself is that of the anarchist crowned according to our taught. One who does not accept any law, and he is the master, a fewer for each man and for each people a homeland, as the maximum revolutionary slogan. We do not respond to any other principle than that of inner leadership, a profound sense of autonomy in which our individualism becomes dictatorial. This without abandoning the essential sense of tribal camaraderie between those who are supportive of us. The revolutionary elite will be forged in the struggle, in the long march towards the renovation of the being. It wouldn't be precise to, pres it wouldn't be precise to personalize power, but instead to deposit it in the hands of the strident minority and whose men would act according to an autonomous and independent inventiveness. This is how we reject moral commandments dictated by Kropotkin and his sacred cells for tolerance, empathy, and inclusion that make freedom from anarchism seen as a collective enterprise. Knowing that in reality, it is an adventure of the most high aristocracy this, even if the tempest is waiting for us, it will be our tempest. Anarcho-fascism proposes to reach the organic community through a free political federation, meaning all spontaneous political spiritual form formation between free individuals, thus ignoring the authority model suggested by the state. A society of leaders with no one to lead a true tribe, a true people, and an organized community. The anarcho-fascist ideal is built on a principle of tribal authority that would give the organization these elites endowed with strong feeling of autonomy. That is to say, we anarcho-fascists only recognize as leaders those figures of org organic authority who take over the reins of the community with the favor of its members. This being the case of great figures, such as Buenaventura Duruti, Nestor Magno, Gabriel D'Annunzio, among many others. All of these, without the support of the law or any other form of false authority, directed their communities. We are sailors on land in a way that they have separated us from our homeland, the sea, the tempest. And here within the system, we will function like bandits until we recover this right. We have already lost respect for the severe law. We do not hate authority, but those who exercise it without being worthy of it. These parasitic entities of bureaucratic apparatus that act in the name of predatory and rotten state are enemies of all people and their proper identities. Our law is written in heaven projected in the hearts of a few, and it can never be put on paper, but we know it from the blood. After the historical defeat that brought the end of the war, we fascists discarded the statist element of our ideal because no state will look after our interests. And as long as power is in the hands of others, the only way to be fascist is to behave anar anarchically. It is this hidden passionate and the real character of the contagious delirium of the fascio, the one which allows us to overcome the political condition of fascism, 
to root out the state and then having its pure spirit with us. The taste of anarchy, the discipline of chaos and the revolt of youth who Romanly salute the black aurora. The banner of those who reject certain things, not only for the mere enjoyment of rejection, but instead because his values do not coincide with the current values, because he rejects the modern world and its bourgeois values and aspires to a superior freedom, just as a severe discipline. And this great mystery of the fascist spirit is precisely our gift to anarchism, forging new men among its ranks, creating anarchs. It's uh, the conclusion of Part. Yeah, it sounds like uh, yeah, it literally sounds like they're revolting against the state because none of the values that they hold as fascist values are found in the modern state. So they're basically saying they're illegitimate. Yeah. And uh, the best the best context to organize in the current world is by anarchism. Uh, it, although it sounds like they're condemning the state, it, it actually kind of feels like a lot of what they're doing is actually creating the prerequisite to recreate a new state, really. It's very siege-esque, where like James Mason talks about how we need to become anarchists in the short term so we can you know, rebuild the state, I guess, the fascist state. Well, yeah, also, if you talk like, like, last, red last people... Last yes, yeah, sir. Oh, it seems like one of the last ones was very inspired by Evola, like being against the modern world and bourgeois values. Not to yeah, say yeah, that yeah. was not against. Yeah, bourgeois. and also, also his notion of the anarch would comes from Ernst Younger. I talked about like in one of my videos how Ernst Younger's idea of the of the anarch is basically what the new man was in fascism or national socialism. But it's like it's like a Nietzschean like aristocrat, like a an individualist who. It lives a totalitarian lifestyle for the sake of bettering himself. He's lifting himself above above animals, at, and he acts out on impulse and passion. Basically, uh, it seems like they want everybody who's a part of like this movement to be like that. But uh, my only complaint right there would be is you really can't expect everybody to be like that. It's going to be very specific people that are going to be like that. But we shouldn't tolerate yoke in our circles who are not like even going to strive to be like that. Um, it goes back to Pasolini and Salo, and uh, we fascists are the only true anarchists. Like, you know, if you don't have that individualistic streak, if you don't have that will to power in your heart, then like, are you really a fascist? Like, I don't really care how like pro-white you are or how socially conservative you are or like anything like that, dude. Like, or how, like, dude, I'm not even gonna get into all that. But it's like, I don't I don't even think it's that. It's just uh, people who would think like that, it was very specific people in the party itself, mainly like the actual black shirts, the ones that would actually go out and like, fight with people uh the vast majority of people that like supported the party weren't going to be doing this they were probably just going to be told what to do and when to do it but like even like in modern casa pound i don't like see them doing that it, it, it seems like they they've largely abandoned that type of mentality for what what you see in the current party but i like I, if, you're, if you're doing like a mass movement political uh type of method you're you can only have very specific small groups of people that are going to be like that very ideological and very purist uh, about ideology and like philosophy you uh, can't we, expect the broad the third, movement to be that way the third position has a term for this the political soldier someone who's dedicated to the ideological cause yeah it's just uh people that are probably going to get involved in this are probably going to be mostly political soldiers so like i think the problem they're going to have is actually organizing that especially like in the modern context with the way modern governments are especially when it comes to dissidents yeah. and i'd also say it's hard to find people like that here in america that are like that uh, any country it's hard to find people like that like you're probably going to be able to muster at most maybe 100 or 200 people yeah even still, I think that kind of mentality should there. There should be an effort to instill that in them. In yeah, them. like in a hierarchy, there should be. Just uh, yeah. if you're doing yeah, like a yeah. radical decentralized movement and you're doing that, like I, yeah. I, I don't 
exactly yeah, think yeah. that would work out very well. It's fair enough. Um, also, seeing how they like want to be decentralized and all of that as well, it it also gives me like vibes like the autonomous nationalist does on how they have decentralized sections, even though they're like Strasserus. I don't know enough about Strasserus to comment on that. Uh, so, uh, I don't really have anything else to say. All right, we can move on to the next part if everyone's ready. Um, pirate autarky starts with the Marinetti quote. Uh, a bomb in the hand of an anarchist is like a rifle in the hand of a patriot soldier. Both are a sign of a rebellion and a means to achieve health and moral hygiene. F.T. Marinetti. Anarcho-fascism ignores all economic theory, embracing the idea of a vitalist voluntarism, guided by a sense of tribal identity, a union socialism conditioned by the national myth of our fellow men, a market for the circulation of wealth, but exclusive of business and barter. There is within our ideal a tendency towards organized banditry, the possibility of counteracting the effects of a parasitic system, such as the one we live in, understood as capitalism, through clandestine expropriation and the reappropriation of assets through theft and mutual coordination. Anarcho-fascism considers the economic question in such a way that it demands, above all, that each worker must possess the means of production, whatever their type thus offering the possibility of a complete productive autonomy, contrary to the collectivization of the means, a production without falling into their monopolization, a condition that would lead the individual to make use of their own efforts within the commune, without generating exploitation among men of the same caste. This form of retribution, according to Merritt, this hierarchical communism, would be accompanied by a strong sense of belonging that added to the principle of mutual assistance would make it possible to cope with the collective needs of the tribes through tribute. Only between equals and spirit, material equity is achieved. And with it, the true communal organization within the people. Therefore, we propose not only looting on a small scale, but on a global scale infiltrate, appropriate, and dominate any land no matter how much we despise artificial borders. This is our proposal. We promote the most radical nationalism outside our homelands as a seed of tempestism. The looting of territories and the genocide of anyone outside our border, playing their game, but in our favor, always everything in our favor. For foreigners, we will be a tribe of Zapatist bandits who invade their homes with a cry of land and tempest. Uh, what the, we'll get into the conclusion. Uh, what did you guys think about pirate autocracy? Anybody there? Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, I'm we're here. I want to say. I'm in a joke, sorry. Verizon Wireless. <laughs> Please subscribe to VerizonWireless.com. Subscribe to Futurism Forever. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I kind of yeah. disagree with them, like invading other people's lands. I'm I'm for like all people determining their own destinies in a way. Like I'm one I'm 100 pro imperialism. Only I think it like, like, depends on context for me. Like I don't, I don't I don't give a shit about other people's countries. It's my yeah. group against everybody else's, and I don't yeah, give a fuck about the, your feelings. Yeah, the idea for taking back South Tyrol. Uh, 100 med supremacy. Um, no, fuck yeah. you. We're taking back Venedig. I'll yeah, conquer Germany too. Personally, when it comes like, to like uh, imperialism, I think it's. Uh, circumstances because like it's not, it may not benefit the people it could benefit the people you need to look at it in contexts like that yeah if it has enough benefits i think you can do it but generally i don't think you should do it yeah i agree with Zoltanus. i'm like for instance i'm more generally against like liberal imperialism rather than what the spanish did back when they controlled latin america Oh, I think with the way Spanish ha handled imperialism is actually probably one of the more correct ways to handle imperialism. But most, yeah, of, the, 
most of uh, like it, say like germany or like britain or like belgium they didn't exactly do imperialism a very good most of their imperialism was just straight up genocides like yeah, especially yeah. with the germans like they kill like 10 million africans <laughs> yeah it's a waste those bodies are economic resources not, not to mention they did a terrible job of integrating the locals. Which yeah, they're they're all to get rid of the culture. The Even the French, with the the French were pretty bad at it too. Yeah, yeah, I think the Spanish did it best. I mean, they're not just economic resources; they're living beings. And it's, yeah. yeah, like oh, shut up. Shut up. You said you're a pro imperialist. Shut up. For Spain, is also about spreading Catholicism. Uh, I know, like when. Italy like went into like Libya and Ethiopia. It really wasn't about like spreading like Catholicism. It was more so because I need them resources, recreate Italian Empire. And then they also want like the Ravenstrom. They didn't even have that many resources. Like Ethiopia, you know, it's not super resource rich. Oh I mean I remember Ethiopia was more because of a black eye. Like Libya was actually over resources. Uh, Mussolini also like got the sword of Islam as well, which, and as far as I'm aware, he had a lot of respect for the Arab population and their Islamic well, traditions. Oh, well, the sword of Islam actually wasn't like an actual like real historic Muslim sword. It was literally something they had blessed by a uh, high-ranking like a uh, Muslim leader, and then they called it the sword of Islam. <laughs> it was just for oh. propaganda. Yeah, it was just for propaganda. <laughs> it's pretty smart though, because he claimed it was from Muhammad. <laughs> Yeah, got that picture but, on the horse. He but but my point tough. still stands is that they weren't necessarily trying to convert the Muslims to Christianity. Yeah, they, they weren't. No, it was secular. Yeah, he was letting them maintain their religious identity. Whereas, yeah, like, and they also started like granting them like um, certain like like party membership and all that limited party membership, but yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. So like Italy was doing okay with their colonialism too. It just wasn't very long. Uh, the Spanish, like, their version of colonialism is very long-lasting, but, like, modern liberal colonialism is just about getting rid of culture, getting rid of uh, completely expropriating the people to, like, a slave mentality, like the blood diamond trade in Africa. Like, yeah, spreading liberal, ter- de- quote-unquote, liberal democracy when reality is it's just to promote global homo and still Yeah, but sex in Botswana. Yeah, I'm replacing it with garbage culture, like McDonald's and porn and just bullshit. Nothing good is being instilled in their conquered peoples at all. It boggles my mind when anti-liberal groups side with the U.S. on, like, geopolitical stuff. Like, like in the end, a lot of these groups in the end, end up getting co-opted and end up becoming liberal. Like, look at the uh, Lebanese Falange, for example. Or the KLA. Ex- do you want to expand on that? Uh, basically, now the uh, Lebanese Falange is now just a liberal party that... that that accepts gay rights in Lebanon. That happened with La Falange. They became like a weird libertarian party, even when they have Jose Antonio like as their icon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know enough about. What makes like, up the rest of the KLA is now a social progressive party that's pro EU and pro Atlanticus. Fuck <laughs> Atlanticism. That's gay. Um, or. I don't know enough about these groups, though, to really comment, though. Yeah, they're doing their struggle, I guess. Um, yeah. I um, think we should move on to the last part, then. The conclusion. Land and Tempest. Okay. For the common citizen, we, we will be the ghost that runs through its streets and offices, sabotaging all that comfort that made them weak. And it will be when they find themselves in the middle of nowhere, that we will be the demon that whispers in their ear the ideas of guillotines in the plinth. We will use their institutions to sabotage their entire system and tear down your system to steal your entire planet. Any action, however contradictory it may be, makes sense within tempestism. The systematic the systemic practice of cannibalism to eliminate the hunger of the masses, together with the practice of Santeria and shamanism as foundations of a self-sustaining economy based on the spiritual needs of the tribe, are our only economic proposals. These esoteric meanings within the community economy 
seeks to break in with the commonly inert degrading materialism of all cremestic doctrine, elevating the mundane conditions of the mercantile system to a project of collective spiritual realization. Everything within this cosmos is touched by the ray of the tempest. The possible and the impossible become one, as long as one is present. For the conquest of the destruction of the system, let's look at each other head on. Tempest or death, MTCS 1611. And there concludes uh, the Tempest Manifesto. So final thoughts on uh, tempestism, anarcho-fascism, as imagined by our Mexican comrades. Hmm. I mean, it's an, it's an interesting ideology. I'd like to see how, how it would actually be put into practice. <laughs> it's an interesting crackpot theory. I'll give it that. Hmm, join the dark side, they did. <laughs> God damn it, Sultanus. Sorry, I'm don't not get, shit posting, I'm sorry. Don't get into the Star Wars LARPing again. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Like. Mm, me like a narco fascist. Oh, uh, um, Absolute power. Mmm, <laughs> gonna I smash mean, my pal, pal, lock on this Yoda rock. Became one. I mean, That's the absolute, true Hegelian dialectic right there. Yes. A absolute power is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, so is uh, absolute rejection of the system. Absolute rejection of the system. What they're doing well, for politics is, the, is basically the Sith, Sith Empire. Everybody's going to be a Sith. That's what the what they're doing in the manifesto. Everybody's a Sith. Yeah, fuck the Jedi. The Sith are way cool. Like, Every man be a king. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have too many bad opinions about it though. They pro they probably do a good job at like running the drug cartel out of business by making cocaine though. I give yeah. them, I give them a look. good luck, guys. Futurism forever supports the total decriminalization of cocaine, by the way. So, um, also beating up cops and <laughs> you, also dude. beating up cops on the street and total anarchy and burning down schools and art galleries. Just imagine a bunch of fat <laughs> Mexicans and sombreros drinking moonshine yeah. taking over a city. <laughs> Well, you got California oh, wait, right oh, wait, there. That already happened with the cartel. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's already been done, man. We need to think forward and like no more looking back. It's like you know, yeah. I got my Brugeria records from like the '90s and shit, like Assassino and Are all you that shit. Montana, bro? Uh, yeah, I'm literally. I've I've like. I've crossed the boundary and I've literally become Tony Montana in real time. I'm just like here with like. Yeah, be careful though, you're going to end up like those kids in Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally, well, uh, you mean sallow, but you know, yeah. I'm in total white face right now and like it's all just white powder and like cocaine. And... Oh, God. <laughs> you like the reversal of Catboy Kami and Blackface, man. I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful. Right, this this has became it. just like the Daily Show right now. The shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're more interesting than them because, like, you know, we haven't promoted white uh, white civil rights once yet, and I hold that all I, together I, to our credit. So what's probably going to happen is with, like, this anarchist uh, commune of, like, multiple different <clears throat> fascists, they're probably all going to start acquiring thin boy GFs. That's probably going to happen. It's going to be an orgy. Oh, all God. Pin all right, settle down, Alcats. Oh, like... All right, we're going to settle down? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> all I want yeah, is a lot of... Most, yeah, of, you guys, most of you guys are drunk or high right now. <laughs> I'm the only sober. I'm Never. the only one sober here. We're, we're, here. Past, we're not at the pro... This is not the pro pederasty episode yet. This is uh, oh, a social conservative podca podcast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a Christian podcast, goddamn. Values. We need to start promoting more Christian values. Christian values. It's a Judeo-Christian right. values. And America first with Nick Fuentes. And Ben 
and we need to return to tradition and um you know, you know the most traditional thing is telling people they can't be gay while you're also being gay nick fuentes yeah. catboy commie he chose them like, first yeah that's true futurism right there that's salo that's definitely sick if there's one thing we need to embrace it's the salo pill and just total dictatorship and um do whatever the fuck you want to whoever you Adorno want. Adorno is the authoritarian personality. Yeah, that's what's people called. people's feelings don't really matter. I mean, let's, who, who cares like, about your feelings? Like, facts <laughs> don't care about your feelings, guys. Trump, Giovanni. Okay, Ben Shapiro. Uh, I'm not, facts I'm don't care about your that. feelings, lip tards. I think it's the entire, like, episode right now right? Uh, yeah that's probably a good place to wrap up hail pasolini hail... and remember yeah. guys reject the hail false Marinetti. embrace the third position yep uh Peace reed, speedy. Siege. Hail Marinetti. reed siege um and you're, no, if you you're a faggot <laughs> death the posers hail our Abigail people Bay. hail victory Hey, I, I, I think we did a good job, guys. 